Hello, fifth grade. I miss you guys. You are doing a fantastic job at home doing these art projects. I can't wait to see this one. We're going to do a very creative project today where you get to design a treehouse. And this treehouse should have lots of colors and patterns and textures. And it should have something very creative about how to get up into the treehouse and how to get down out of the treehouse. And they've got to be two different things. You can have all sorts of ropes going out to the side and swings and slides, elevators, stairs. Everyone's should be completely different because all of you have wonderful imaginations. And I can't wait to see how you're going to do this project. Watch the video and at the end I'll demonstrate how to do one. And then stop at the end of part one so that the following week you can continue on with the lesson doing mostly the coloring. If you don't have any colors at home, at least do the drawing in pencil and possibly outline it in a marker if you can find one. But most of you seem to have some colors at home, so continue coloring on as much of the project as you can. Try not to leave anything white. You have two weeks to do this, so take your time and do a neat job. This week's project is called Creative Treehouse, and as the name implies, I expect you to be very, very creative. For your Creative Treehouse drawing, the learning goal is that I can use craftsmanship and technical ability in personal works to show refinement of skill. And what that really means is that you can draw your subject accurately and that you're neat and you can control the art materials. We will start by drawing a simple shape for your treehouse near the top of the page and then build a tree underneath it to hold it up. That way the tree won't be covering too much of the treehouse. Notice all the colors, the patterns, the textures, and the values that are being used in these drawings. We'll talk more about that when we get started on your creative treehouse. Every treehouse will need an interesting way to get into the house and a different way to get out of the house. Check out this one. It looks like they have an elevator leading up to the house and a slide that you would go down and plop right into the lake. Okay, I'm gonna hold my paper vertical, but I don't think it really matters. You could hold it horizontally if you want. And I'm gonna start with the house part of the treehouse. I'm gonna start with the front of the house and then add a side to the house so it looks like it's a three-dimensional form. I'm gonna add on to my house so it's not boring. I'll add a little addition onto the side. And if you wanna to try to copy mine, you can pause the video and try to do that same house or be super creative and make up one completely different. I'm making a little platform here like a porch that I could stand on and a fancy curved door, a window, and maybe a little chimney that I can have coming off the top of my house. Doesn't seem very safe in a treehouse to have fire, but this is just a drawing. Okay, now I'm going to start some branches. These branches are what, what's holding up my platform or my porch for the house. There, the branches are holding up the house. Now I'll continue down for the tree trunk and I wanna leave room under the tree trunk so I have some ground. Going back to those branches, I wanna split my branch into two thinner branches. There we go. And then I'll put some greenery on the top of that. This time I'll try splitting it in three branches. It's like three fingers coming out of a hand. All right, that's good for now. I want to think of a way to get out of the tree house, so I'm going to create a tube slide. I'm making a curvy line, and then it's going to be like a cylinder. I have to get my eraser and clean out those lines that are going through my tube. This will be how I get out of the tree house. I'll go out that window, slide down the tube, and then land in something. Hmm. What should I land in? Well, this could be a puddle of chocolate or mud or water. 
I think I'll make some planks of wood nailed to the tree for a ladder to climb up. That's one way I could get into the tree house. Here's another door. And then this is going to be like a rope hanging down with knots. And that would be another way to get in the tree house. Maybe I'll put a tire swing at the bottom of that rope. So you swing, and then you climb up those knots, make your way up to the top of the platform. Oh, I have an idea. How about one of those poles, like the, the firemen slide down? And you can grab onto the pole and, oh, here it is. I got to scoot my paper over and slide down the pole to land on the ground. So let's draw a ground, some grass going behind the tree and out the other side so I can tell that tree is on the ground. And I think I'll even draw myself coming out of the slide. I'm just using simple little ovals to make a head, a torso, upper legs, lower legs, and arms. Coming out that slide, landing in my chocolate puddle. Yeah, that's what that is. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to draw some curve lines. And this helps create the illusion that that is a form, a tube-like cylinder form. I think I'll also put some texture on the house, some boards and planks and some shingles. And then I feel like mine needs a little more branches. There's not enough branching and leaves to my tree. So I'm just going to fill that whole background in with more leaves and more branches. I can't quite capture it all on my camera. These will be uh, lounge chairs. When I want to lay out in the sun on my porch. There, so be creative and try to think of fun ideas of things you can add. Some grass. You know, maybe I'll make uh, my dog down here waiting for me to come out of the house. There's his ear and his face. And there's his tail. There, he's anxiously awaiting me to come down from the treehouse. All right, next thing to do is to color it in. This is a good place to stop for the first session, pause, and start up again next week with part two. Welcome back to the drawing of your creative treehouse. And this is part two, where we will be talking about the elements of art. Take a look at this poster and look at all the elements of art, line, shape, color, value, form, space, and texture. And we're going to be using all of those in our picture. The element of line was used to draw the tree and the treehouse. And then the element of shape is all over the place. The uh, circle and the rectangles and even freeform shapes. Now I'm drawing in some texture. And texture is the element that shows how something would feel. So we're making it look leafy and we'll make the tree have some bark texture. I can even make the dog have a furry texture. The element of space creates some distance in our picture. So we're going to try to draw something behind the tree to show that it goes farther back in space, creating distance where the hills are. But I've got to pick up the pencil and draw behind the objects that are in the foreground. I'm even going to draw some smaller trees in that background distance to help it look like we've got foreground, middle ground, background. I'm sorry, the video is not quite catching the trees I'm drawing. Okay, there you go. They're smaller in the distance because that's how we create the illusion of space. Color is one of the elements of art that I love. You can use crayons or markers or colored pencils, even watercolor paint or chalk to color in your project based on whatever you have at home. Try to make it bright and colorful and happy and fill it all in. Try not to leave anything white. Let's color every inch of this page. Value is the element of art that talks about the lightness or darkness of a color. You can make a color darker by adding a bit of black to it, or you can make a color darker by pressing harder with the crayon or colored pencil to make it a darker value of green. That's what I'm going to do here. I have a lighter value on the hill in the foreground and as it gets farther away I'm going to press harder with my green crayon and try to create a darker value of green. 
I want to do those evergreen trees green also, but because I want them to show up, I'm going to try to find a different green to color them in so they don't all look like the same type of green. Value can also be used to help us with the last element of art, which is form. Form is when a shape becomes three-dimensional and it has length, width, and depth, and then we call it a form. So this little slide I'm working on is actually a tube or a cylinder, and I'm going to use the value of this orange crayon to create the illusion that it's 3D. I'm darkening very hard on the two sides and then putting a lighter value next to that dark value. And then I'm actually going to leave it totally white right in the middle to look like a shine or a highlight on that one spot. I'm going to repeat the blue the same way I did the orange, dark on the edges, lighter in the middle. And you can see it's already starting to take on the illusion that it's a tube with a three-dimensional quality. What's really going to help it is if I darken in the opening of the tube and the edges, and now it really pops. Now it's your turn to get started. Hold your paper either way and start by drawing the house first and building the tree around it. Create some distance in the background and add a fun way to get in and out of the tree. I can't wait to see your creations. Remember to use all the elements of art.